A boy named Artemis Jr. gets a strange call from an evil fairy named Opal who tells him that his father has just been kidnapped. As the boy looks confused, Opal says she'll only release his father if he brings her a precious artifact called the Aculos. Artemis Jr. has no idea what this is, but Opal doesn't seem to care. Days before, reporters flock to the house of the boy's father, Artemis Fowl, who is an antique collector after he's accused of being a thief. However, Artemis doesn't seem to be home, and as detectives look around, they only find a man named Mulch. He immediately gets arrested because it is believed that Mulch is an accomplice of Artemis. He gets taken away for questioning, but during the interrogation, Mulch says he's innocent. The detectives believe he's lying and that he must at least know something about the unusual seismic activity that happened around Artemis's house called the Fowl Manor. They also mention that there was a fisherman who said he saw fairies around the house. Mulch jokes about it and says the witness probably saw something he wasn't supposed to see. As they then tell him to talk about Artemis, Mulch laughs and says he never worked with the antique collector. He adds that the detectives are worried about the wrong person because Artemis Jr. is the mastermind behind everything that happened. The detectives are left shocked by this, but as they seem to underestimate what a 12-year-old boy can do, Mulch chooses to narrate what really happened. Many days before, Artemis Jr. visits a school counselor who complains about how rude he has always been. He suggests that it's likely because Artemis' parents are not very present in his life. While his mom died a few years ago, his dad is always busy traveling around the world for business. Artemis doesn't seem to enjoy the session, and he eventually storms out of the office. When he gets home, his dad is around and they spend time together, as Artemis Sr. continues to teach his son everything about the fantasy world, including fairies, goblins, and elves. The next day, as Artemis Sr. starts telling his son another story, Artemis Jr. doesn't seem to be interested, and he asks his dad when he'll be leaving again. Artemis Sr. doesn't look happy with this, but he tells his son that he needs to leave for another meeting immediately. He says he'll be back soon, and that his work is finally about to come to an end. Artemis Jr. asks to accompany his dad on the trip, but Artemis Sr. says it's safer for his son to stay back at home. He then leaves the house while his son watches. The next day, Artemis Jr. wakes up to see his dad's bodyguard, Domovoy, speaking to someone on the phone about a very urgent matter. As he goes downstairs, the news comes on, and Artemis Jr. sees that his dad's yacht has been abandoned in the middle of the sea, just as he's accused of being behind the robbery of some rare antiquities. Artemis Jr. is left shocked by this, but he doesn't believe it. As he looks unhappy, Domovoy comes over to get him away from the TV. Just then, he hears a phone ringing and runs to answer it. It then turns out to be an evil fairy named Opal, who tells him that his father has been kidnapped. Artemis Jr. looks confused, but as he asks for confirmation, Opal immediately lets Artemis Sr. speak to his son. Following this, Artemis Sr. tells his son that he can't be saved. He also adds that all the stories he has ever told his son are true. Opal eventually takes the phone from him and tells Artemis Jr. that if he wants to see his father again, he needs to find an artifact called Aculos. Artemis Jr. says he doesn't know what it is, but Opal tells him to figure it out. The call ends, and Domovoy asks Artemis Jr. what Opal said. As he talks about the Aculos, Domovoy says there's something he needs to show the young boy. Just then, he takes Artemis Jr. into an underground office where his father keeps all his work. Domovoy says all the things inside the room are from generations of research that began with his great-grandfather. As he looks around, he sees some interesting objects that suggest that his dad's stories are real. He still looks confused and asks Domovoy about the Aculos, but the bodyguard says he knows nothing about it. Domovoy then tells Artemis Jr. that they need to find his father's journal. Even though he says he doesn't know where to look, Artemis Jr. remembers the poem his dad usually reads to him every night. With the words in the poem, Artemis Jr. finds clues that help him locate his dad's journal. He checks the last entry, and it turns out that his dad knew someone was after him. Artemis Jr. also discovers that the Aculos is a very important and powerful mythical artifact that cannot get into evil hands. He also finds out that a fairy named Beechwood gave his father the Aculos. This leads him to start thinking about fairies and if they're real. Elsewhere in a land of fairies and other mythical creatures called Haven City, Mulch is arrested and sentenced to prison for stealing. He tries to beg an officer named Short for help, but she tells him that he deserves his sentence. 
Meanwhile, a commander named Cudgens, who has been court-martialed and is awaiting trial, gets visited by Opal. She says she has helped clear his name so he can work for her. Cudgens is shocked by this, but Opal says his job is to spy on the Fairy Command Center to ensure that nothing prevents Artemis Jr. from finding the Aculos and bringing it to her. Shortly after, the commander of the Fairy Army, Root, summons all the teams and sends them out to find the Aculos because it has gone missing for too long. Despite this, Short isn't allowed to go on the mission, as she also asks Root to let her go to a place called the Hill of Tara to find something that might clear her dead father's name, Root tells her to stay back. The commander then tells her that she needs to avoid making things get personal because it could affect her judgment. It turns out that Short is Beechwood's daughter, and she is desperately trying to clear her father's name after he was accused of using his magic to steal the Aculos. Meanwhile, Domovoy gets his niece, Juliet, to watch over Artemis and help with the mission. While they're together, Artemis tells Juliet that he has a feeling that the Aculos is in the house, even though he hasn't been able to find it. He eventually says he might not be the one to find it and that he'll need someone's help because dwarfs are quite good at stealing and finding treasures. He says he'll need one. Juliet then asks how he plans to get one, and Artemis says the fairies will help him. He then adds that he has a plan to capture a fairy. From his dad's journal, there appears to be one who constantly visits a nearby hill, and that's the one he's targeting. Meanwhile, the head of security at Haven City, Foley, informs Root that one of the creatures has escaped to the surface. Since he doesn't have enough information on it, he suggests sending someone to check what's happening. Because Short is the only agent present, Root has no choice but to let her go. However, as she's getting ready, Cudgens confronts Root and says it's a bad idea to assign Beechwood's daughter to a mission. Root doesn't seem to care, and after a while, Foley gets Short ready for the mission. Elsewhere, Artemis gets Domovoy to wait at the Hill of Tara to see if a fairy will show up. Much later, Short discovers that the creature who escaped is a giant troll. She immediately informs Root, who then tells Foley to set up a time freeze over the place so that the giant can be easily extracted. Before Foley can get the time freeze working, Short defends the humans from the giant. As the time freeze works, Root tells her to take the giant away and wipe the memories of everyone who saw him. Short does as she's told, but on her way home, she decides to visit the Hill of Tara. Root doesn't like this, but Short says she has to clear her father's name. Unfortunately, as she lands there, Domovoy and Artemis see her. Before she realizes that they're after her, they shoot her down and kidnap her. Foley sees that Short's signal is no longer on the radar, so he informs Root. She looks unhappy with this and asks if there's any human residence nearby. As she realizes that Foul Manor is close to where it happened, she tells Foley to get all the fairy soldiers ready to go there. She says they need to find Short because she cannot allow humans to discover that fairies are real. The next day, Short complains about being held hostage and even tries to use her mind control powers on Juliet, but it doesn't work because she's wearing a pair of glasses. Artemis then shows up and says it's something his dad told him in his stories. Short says he needs to let her go, but he says he's waiting for her people to come. A while later, the fairies set up a time freeze, which also sees a nearby fisherman get caught up in it. Artemis sees this and immediately tells Domovoy that they need to get ready to negotiate with the fairies. Just as the fairy soldiers land in Foul Manor, Artemis and Domovoy come out to meet them. However, they start aiming to shoot down the time freeze capsule. Even though the fairies try to stop them, Domovoy eventually takes a clean shot that destabilizes the capsule. Foley and Root are left shocked by this because it means the time freeze won't hold for much longer. Just then, Artemis sends a message to the fairy command center and tells them to send someone to negotiate. Elsewhere, Opal informs Artemis Sr. that his son has kidnapped a fairy and is trying to get the Aculos. Artemis Sr. asks what Opal is trying to gain from it, and she says she wants revenge for how humans treated fairies in the past and sent them to live beneath the Earth. She also says she'll use the Aculos to create portals to bring her army to the Earth's surface so she can take down humans and put the fairies in their rightful place. Meanwhile, Root goes to see Artemis Jr. He welcomes her in and tells her that he wants the Aculos in exchange for Short. Root is confused by his request, and she also mentions that fairies don't negotiate. However, when Artemis says he'll expose their existence to the world after the time capsule falls, Root has no choice but to start thinking of what to do. 
As she leaves the house, she thinks about Artemis's ridiculous request again, and eventually tells her soldiers to bring Mulch to Foul Manor. Shortly after, Artemis goes to meet Short to inform her that his plan is going quite well. She shouts at him and accuses him of playing a game with the situation. However, Artemis says he's only trying to rescue his father, who has been kidnapped. Short also mentions that she wants to clear her dead father's name. Artemis asks how he died, and she says he was ambushed by fellow fairies who blamed him for stealing the Aculos. Artemis then mentions that he learned from his father's journal that someone named Beechwood gave him the Aculos. Short says Beechwood is her father, and that she believes he had to give the Aculos away because of how dangerous it could be in the wrong hands. Shortly after, Mulch arrives in Root's tent, and she tells him to tunnel his way into Foul Manor to save Short. He negotiates a reduced sentence to get this done, and after Root accepts, he uses his wide mouth to dig his way into the house. Artemis sees this as it's happening, but he doesn't do anything, because he hopes Mulch can lead him to the Aculos. Apart from being a tunneler, big dwarves like Mulch are also drawn to treasures and artifacts. Just as Mulch comes in, it doesn't take long before he discovers a safe and finds the Aculos, leaving Foley and Root shocked. Artemis quickly frees Short after she says he can trust her. They then head over to meet Mulch. As Artemis picks up the Aculos, Short tells him not to use it because humans can get killed if they use it. He, however, says it's his bargaining chip to help save his father, and he's not planning to use it. Before Root decides what to do next, Opal calls Cudgeons and tells him to take control of the situation. With this, he goes to meet Root and tells her that he's now in charge because the Aculos is now in danger. Even though she resists, Root eventually lets him do his thing. Just then, he gets a giant troll to be brought to the scene. He says he's going to release the troll into the house to kill everyone inside and get the Aculos. He also tells the soldiers to block all the magic inside the house. They're shocked by this because Short is still inside and she'll need her magic, but Cudgeon still insists. As the troll is about to be released, Short sees it and warns the others that the creature is dangerous. She also notices that she no longer has access to her magic. Shortly after, the troll gets released, and he immediately starts destroying the house and trying to kill Artemis and the others. As they try to escape the troll, Mulch swallows the Aculos to keep it safe. Artemis also tries to shoot down the troll while he's hanging from a chandelier. As the creature is about to fall on him, Domovoy runs to save him, but he gets hurt instead. The troll dies from the fall, but Artemis also sees that Domovoy is dying. He tries to get Short to save him, but she says her magic has been blocked out. While Domovoy is saying his last words, some of the fairy soldiers tell Cudgeons to unblock the magic inside the house so that Short can save herself. He refuses to do anything, but Root overrules his command and tells them to unblock the magic. As this happens, Short realizes that she has her magic back, so she uses it to save Domovoy. They then head outside, only to see that the time capsule is about to explode. Artemis gets the Aculos back from Mulch, just as the fairies are told to leave Foul Manor before the time capsule explodes. On her way out, she sees the fisherman caught in the time freeze and saves him. As she's then about to join the others to leave, she has a rethink, but Root tells her not to go back. However, she doesn't appear to listen to her commander as the capsule explodes. Shortly after, Artemis says he can't give the Aculos to Opal because she could use it for evil. Domovoy tells him to use it to save his father instead, but he remembers Short's warning and says it might kill him. Just then, Short comes in and offers to help. As this is happening, Opal threatens to kill Artemis Sr. because his son failed to bring the Aculos. Meanwhile, Short uses the Aculos to try to save Artemis Sr., but she's not sure it worked. Artemis goes around the house to see if his dad is back, but he's nowhere to be found. As he's about to give up, he hears a strange sound and goes into his dad's underground office and finds him there. Elsewhere, Opal sees that Artemis Sr. has been saved, so she screams in anger. Artemis Jr. reunites with his dad and mentions that he got help from Beechwood's daughter. Artemis Sr. then tells Short that her dad was a hero and he gave up the Aculos because he knew what Opal wanted to do with it. He also gives Short Beechwood's list, which contains the names of Opal's accomplices. Following this, Short returns to Haven City with the Aculos. Root commends her for her brave work and assigns her the task of investigating everyone on her father's list. She's very happy with this, and as she meets her team, they congratulate her for bringing back the Aculos. 
Days later, several reporters are outside Foul Manor waiting to see Artemis Sr. As he sees them, he asks his son what they'll have to do, but Artemis says he's already working on it. His dad then says they need to leave so they can finish his work. Before he joins his dad, he says he needs to make a call first. Just then, he calls Opal and warns her that he's coming to get her. She doesn't sound too pleased with this, but Artemis is not bothered. A while later, Mulch tells the detectives that Artemis and his father were only protecting the peace in the world. He also says his arrest was planned and that Artemis sent him to the detectives so they could believe his story about fairies. As they don't seem to understand what he's saying, he shows them his ears and also opens his mouth widely to bring out a tracking device. Just as he laughs at the detectives, who seem scared, Artemis and his dad arrive right on time to save Mulch. He then joins them on their helicopter along with Domovoy as they prepare to continue their fight against Opal. Mulch looks excited about this, and as he looks outside the window, he sees Short flying next to them. 